Hey, what's up, Logic fans? Welcome to uh, another set of videos. We're covering section 4.6 of the text today, and here we get to talk about the meaning of the existential quantifier. It's absolutely imperative that to understand the meaning, you also understand the mechanics of it, which we covered in 4.5, so I'm going to be assuming that material. Let's rock. All right, let's jump right in. Um, so let's just start off by talk looking at what is perhaps the simplest um, existentially quantified sentence which is this. Um, this is to be read, let's suppose f of x is a property constant designating the property um, being read. So this says at least one thing is read, okay? Um, there exists at least one x such that x is read, um, at least one thing is read, some x is read, something is read, at least one thing is read. Um, these are all perfect, uh, perfectly adequate translations of this. Um, officially, we're going to render it something like this. This will be our sort of official rendering for our textbook. And you should, if you're using a different textbook, different professor, you should check with them precisely how they prefer it rendered if they have a preference. But um, we're going to render it this way. Um, there exists at least one thing, one X, in the domain satisfying this description okay so th th that's just this part there exists at least one thing in the domain all right and if you need to remember if you need to know about domains check out 4.4 that's where that concept is first introduced with respect to the meaning of the universal quantifier but i'm assuming that here there exists at least one thing in the domain satisfying this description it is read all right, so that's going to be our sort of official way of rendering it. I think it's a very helpful way of rendering it. So once again, we can bring our heuristic device of Santa's bag to bear on this. So once again, I want you to sort of think of it this way, okay, where, you know, uh, this blue guy here is sort of Santa's bag, right? And you're reaching in and you don't really know what's in there. I'm kind of showing you some things just to illustrate, but it's like you don't know what's in there. And so the sentence we're investigating is something is read. And so, you know, that's going to be true provided there's at least one thing in the bag in the domain of discourse that satisfies that description. And in this case, we can see that there is at least one thing in the bag that satisfies that description. But if we said there's at least one thing in the bag that's read and a triangle or is read and a cube or something like that, um, then we would say that's false because nothing in the bag satisfies that description okay so uh, the existential quantifier unlike the universal quantifier says there exists at least one thing could be infinitely many things right could be just two things could be just one thing could be 32 things okay um, you have no idea but um, there's at least one thing in there that satisfies whatever description is given in this case fx meaning um, x is red there's at least one thing in there that's red um, okay, so let's try a couple of others really quickly together. Uh, what would this particular statement mean? Pause now. This says there exists at least one thing in the domain satisfying this description. This, de whoops, this description right here. It is not red. There's at least one thing in the bag that's not red. So provided you've got one thing in there that's not red, that statement is true. If there, uh, if it turns out that everything in there is red, then the statement's false. All right. Let's try another one. What about this one? What does this say? Let's try this one together. There we go. This guy. What's this mean? All right. So we're going to do this together. So first of all, it satisfies the description is red. So we're going to take this not out. But uh, this says it is not the case that there exists at least one thing in the domain satisfying this description. It is red. All right. Colloquially stated, that's what it means. Right? Nothing is red. In the bag, nothing is red. Okay? Um, so it's not the case that at least one thing is red. So nothing in there is red is the idea. All right? That's what that means. And this one here would be translated, nothing in there is such that it is not red. Right? Nothing in there is not red, all right? Nothing um, in the domain satisfies this description. It is not red. So in other words, everything in there is red. 
So if nothing satisfies the description not read, right, if nothing is that way, then it's like saying everything in there is read. Right, so I'll put that everything, put that up here. And we will talk about the relationship between the universal and the existential quantifier in a separate section. Okay, so if you're if you're starting to see relationships between them, that's because there are relationships. We will study that later, but let's just stay focused on the existential quantifier for now. Okay, so let's introduce a couple of different domains here. We've got uh, three different domains. The first one is a set consisting of two red balls and nothing else, all right? Just uh, just the two red balls, all right? And then the next one, D2, is a set that has a red ball, a green ball, and nothing else, okay? And then um, the third one is um, two green balls and nothing else. So let's do it this way. And you're supposed to determine for these sentences, all right, whether they're true or false on these domains. Now, we're going to assume that f of x stands for, you know, is red, okay? So we don't, we're not introducing the is green one in these sentences, but is red. So uh, let's start with this sentence here. Can you tell me if that existentially quantified sentence is true or false on these different domains? Pause now. Okay, hope you've had a chance to pause and think about this. But on D1, it's true that there exists at least one red thing. So that is, in fact, true. On D2, there exists at least one red thing. So that's true. On D3, that is false. It's not the case that there exists at least one red thing. Nothing is red on D3. Okay, so uh, again, that, that, that we're going to render this. At least one thing in the domain satisfies this description. Okay, so at least one thing in the domain satisfies this description. Is that true or false on D1, D2, D3? Pause now. Okay, so hope you've got a chance to think this through for yourself and really do think it through. At least one thing is such that it's not red. Well, that's false on D1, right? It's got two red balls and nothing else. It's not the case that there's at least one thing that's not red. A red ball and a green ball, so at least one thing is not red? That's absolutely true. All right, now what about D3? Two green balls and nothing else? That's true too. At least one thing is not red. It doesn't matter how many, at least one. Okay? All right, now this, go ahead and try this one. I'll give you a hint in a second. Pause now. All right, your hint is that this sentence is the negation of this sentence, right? If you were to build this sentence up from scratch, all of 4.5, or rather, if you were to build this sentence from scratch, all of 4.5, first you would build this, and then immediately after you would use QS2 to get that, right? So this is the negation of that. Pause now. Okay, I mean, if that's the negation of it, it's just going to take the opposite values, right? So it's going to be false here, false here, and true here. Let's go through it. This is like saying nothing is red. It's not the case that at least one thing in the domain is red. Well, that's false here, and it's also false here. It's not the case that at least one thing. So it would be false on this one. It's not the case that at least one thing is red. Nothing is red. Well, that's true here, right? So it works out that way, too. All right, go ahead and try the last one, true or false, on these different domains. Okay, hopefully you've got it, but uh, notice that this sentence uh, is the negation of this sentence. So it's going to do the opposite, right? It's going to go true, false, false, all right? And this says uh, nothing is such that it's not red, right? Um, everything in there is red. So that's true on D1 and false on the others. Okay, that's the other way you could think about it. Um, so I hope that these little tricks with the negation help you figure things out, all right? Let's look at some more examples. Okay, in this particular example, we're going to use the same three uh, domains, but we're going to introduce BX. So we've got FX meaning X is red and BX meaning X is a ball. And once again, you're supposed to determine whether these sentences were growing a little more in complexity are true or false on these different domains. So uh, pause now and give the first one a try. We'll come back and do it together. And then you can pause after that and try these other ones too, if you like. So go ahead and give D, uh, this sentence a shot on D1, D2, and D3.
Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this, all right? And I might do break and do a little bit of a deep dive on this kind of thing. So um, let's look at this. This says there's at least one thing in Santa's bag. Reach in there. You're going to pick something out, okay? At least one thing in there is red and it's a ball. So at least one thing in there satisfies this description, right? And provided that that's true, um, provided there's at least one thing in there satisfying this description, the whole existentially quantified sentence is true, otherwise it's false. So uh, let's take a look at D1. Two red balls and nothing else. Is it true that there's at least one thing in there, some one thing that you pick out that could satisfy this description, it's red and it's a ball? Yes, so that is true in this particular situation on this domain. Let's take a look at domain two. A red ball and a green ball and nothing else. Is it true that there's at least one thing, some one object that satisfies this description? It's red and it's a ball. And the answer there is, is yes, absolutely. There's the red ball, right? And then uh, on D3, you got two green balls and nothing else. Is there some one object that satisfies this description? It's red and it's a ball. And the answer is no. Therefore, um, it's false on D3. So go ahead and try uh, some of these others, all right? Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to pause. I'm gonna continue on. We're gonna do this together, but make sure you are pausing and trying to think these through. This says at least one thing in the domain satisfies this description. It's not red and it's a ball. Is there anything like that in D1? And the answer is no. So it's false, right? Everything in D1 is red, all right? Is there at least one thing in D2 that satisfies this description right here? It's not red and it's a ball. Absolutely, there's at least one thing like that. It's not red and it's a ball. This guy right here, okay? Is there at least one thing in D3 that's not red and a ball? And the answer is yes, there is. So that's going to be true, okay? And that's exactly how we're thinking about this kind of thing. Now, reach into Santa's bag. Is there at least one thing you could pull out that satisfies this description? It's not red and it's not a ball. And the answer there is, is false across the board, right? Everything in there is a ball. So you're never going to satisfy this description no matter what you pick out of one of these domains, okay? So that's that case. Now, here's what I want to point out with this one. If you haven't figured it out already, there's a relationship between these two. These sentences are actually logically equivalent. One way you can get yourself to see that is by application of De Morgan's. We will talk later about how to apply De Morgan's to quantificational sentences. That'll be chapter six. But intuitively, you can see that like you can distribute this through and change the or to an and, and you kind of get this. So since they're logically equivalent, these are going to uh, take the same truth value on every domain, okay? A concept we will discuss later, but I just wanted to observe so that you can help yourself sort of, you know, problem solve a little bit. Yeah, can I see that, that the sentence is logically equivalent to another sentence that I can do? Um, and so that's a nice problem solving strategy for these types of things. Okay, I don't want to rush us, so let's uh, spill on to the next video. See you on 4.6b.